Howdy YouTube, Esnix here with a video. It's been a while since I did one of these, so excuse me if I seem a little rusty. I put up three new ISOs in the Easy Archer project. The Easy Archer project is my respin of Arch Linux into ISOs, desktop, full desktop ISOs. And typically in the past, I've done five desktops. XFCE, KDE, Cinnamon, LXQT, and Mate. This time I only put up three. I put up the XFCE, which is my favorite, the Mate, and the KDE. And the reason I did that is, one, I'm not so sure about Calamari's at the moment. Uh, we'll take a look at a current bug in the Calamari's issue tracker and talk about it and look at um, my latest KDE spin. I have the Easy Archer SourceForge page up here and I'll show you what's up at the moment. So under files, there is now the ISO 241025 folder and the project files were all updated yesterday. So you can see the ISOs up here the KDE, the MATE, and the XFCE, the MD5 sum file with all three MD5 sums for the ISOs. You can get that by going to the info button here as well. So it'll show you the SHA-1 and the MD5. Looks like uh, people are discovering it already, which is cool. Um, let's see what else. The project files as I said, were updated as well. So the templates, there are all five templates, even though I didn't spin up all five ISOs. So if you download the templates or if you grab any one of the ISOs, the templates for the Cinnamon and the LXQT releases are there. You can build them if you wish. The PKG build files were all updated. Those are the five uh, packages that I include in a local repository at build time, Calamari's being the most important, of course, but also downgrade Trizen as a AUR helper, and then two little packages that sort of assist Calamari's with the language in some way, CKB comp and MK init CPIO swap. So, uh, so let's take a look at the Calamari's issue. Now, if we go over to Calamari's and we go to their uh, issues tracker here, there is an open issue called automatic partition task fail with swap. This seems to affect automatic partitioning on an EFI install only, not on a BIOS at the moment, but on an EFI uh, installation when swap is chosen the swap partition fails to get created and the installation errors out very quickly at that point. Now, the discussion revolves around working around this problem by uh, downgrading or uh, changing KPM core by reverting a commit. Now, that is a true kludge of a workaround. Calamari's needs to work with KPM Core, the underlying partitioning tool used by Calamari's in the uh, installation process. I mentioned that at some point here, that uh, is there any movement on this issue? And being told no, Eric Dubois of Arco Linux has seemed to have or used this workaround in his uh, project. I don't believe this is a good workaround. Uh, it does work, but it really holds KPM core hostage to the problems in Calamari's, which shouldn't be. Now, the Calamari's uh, crew here, uh, Dem M, M uh, not going to try to pronounce that, says that it's really up to the users and distro builders like us to fix these problems. I am no C coder. I am no um, 
yeah, I'm not a C coder, uh, C++, even Python. I know nothing about coding. I couldn't fix this problem. I can't even really diagnose it. I can describe what happens when the problem occurs, but that's about it. So like many people, I'm waiting around for calamaris, uh, the people who know how to code, to fix this problem. So let's take a look over at my Easy Archer KDE desktop. This is built, the ISO is built uh, October 25th, 2024. And if we go to system and install system, we're asked for the user password live. And we'll bring this up here. And we can see that the version of Calamaris is the most recent one released about a week ago, 3.3.10. If we go back to the issue tracker here, this issue was reported with 3.3.9. And I was hoping that when Calamaris released 3.3.10, they would have addressed this and they haven't. If we go back to the actual code repository here, and we go to the change file, change log here, we can see what they've done with 3.3.10, and no mention of fixing what to me is a much more serious problem than these keyboard errors or um, user permissions, which never really was a problem anyway. Um, so a little prioritization, I would hope, on the part of Calamari's developers who actually know how to code is deal with partitioning errors before you deal with more ephemeral things. So let's go back to the installation here. Now, as I said, we're running this in an EFI enabled VM. I'm not going to duplicate the error because there's no point in the VM. I can just delete it and have to recreate it. If you really want to use Calamari's installing in an EFI situation and you want a swap partition, the only option though at this point, whoops, is to do manual partitioning and create your partition table, GUID, of course, um, and start creating your partitions. This does seem to work here. So we'll do a EFI partition 1024 megabytes, uh, FAT32, uh, we'll mount it at slash EFI, give it a label EFI, select the boot flag, and that should be good for that. Let's do a roughly 20 gigabyte home partition, uh, root partition, call it root. We'll do, let's see, a swap partition 2048, Linux swap, we'll call it swap, and we'll do the remainder ext4 home partition, call it home, and we're good to go. So no automatic partitioning, manual partitioning only. Give it a password. And install. And we should see it go through the process here. Creating all the partitions mounting them and beginning to fill up the file systems. So if you toggle the log, 
you can see exactly what it's doing and everything seems to proceed as it should. So if you really want to use Calamari's in an EFI situation with Easy Archer, do a manual partitioning, shouldn't have a problem. There are other options in Easy Archer though. Let's bring up the console here and we'll make it a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And just to show you, we'll do Pac-Man search for Arch install. And because the Calamaris is running, it's slowing up this a bit down here. We can see that I do include the Arch install script. So you can always use that if you'd like to do an Arch install script and use what's included in Arch to do the installation. So that's always an option. Another option is to run my own EasyArch UEFI script, give it the password, and you can use my own scripted installer as well. Now, this also gives you the choice of desktops. So we're not going to do this uh, here, uh, the install this way, because we're already running Calamari's. But if you use my own Easy Arch install script, you get a choice of LXQT, Plasma, XFCE, Mate, and Cinnamon. So those are two other methods for doing installations. Now, you can certainly open up a web browser, go to the Arch website, look at the wiki, and follow the instructions in this more comfortable live desktop environment. So hopefully the Easy Archer project will not experience any real negative feedback. This is a Calamari's issue. At some point, it should be fixed. It can certainly be worked around within Calamari's itself. Uh, we're almost done here. So we're going to wait for this to finish. We'll reboot into the installed system just to show you that it does work as it should. And with the manual partitioning, you certainly get every option, more options, obviously, than automatic. Uh, in this case, I put home on a separate partition. That's an option you wouldn't get in the automatic partitioning uh, option. So it's creating the user, setting the password, installing. Actually, it's removing packages, not installing packages. And then it'll go install the bootloader. While it's doing that, we'll take a quick peek back here. Maybe look at SourceForge again. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can always use the discussion forum on the Easy Archer project page. Right now, uh, they are getting old. Haven't had anyone really mentioning any problems. And the ones that do I do address as quickly as I notice them. Let's see what we're doing. We're installing the bootloader. Let's toggle the log. So right now it's running grub install on the target. EFI directory is specified as slash EFI, which is what we chose when we created the partitions. Now, if you create a partition, EFI partition, and do not, uh, and you choose something else, that would be reflected here as well. So you don't have to worry about that. We should proceed on to grub mk config, of course, and it should finish up within a few seconds now. There we go. 
So let's click done. Let's restart. And we should be greeted by the installed system now. Yes, we are. And just to demonstrate we are actually in the installed system, we'll wait till we log in. The KDE Plasma desktop does default to uh, Wayland as its first option in the uh, display manager, but that can be changed to X11, which we'll do. SDDM should be coming up any second now. There we go. Now we can change this to X11 and select our password that we chose during installation. Now, I noticed the Plasma desktop on first boot after installation does seem to take a little longer than it does on subsequent reboots. Uh, I assume that's just because it's setting up its first run. Uh, first run of the desktop Plasma seems a little sluggish. The other desktops, Mate and XFCE, are quite a bit more sprightly. So... Uh, but we're almost there. We'll wait just until it comes up. And then we can sign off this video. You can enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure if you live in the U.S., you are voting. Please vote. This is a very important election to voice your opinions. And since this is not a political uh, channel, I won't tell you who to vote for. I will tell you who I did not vote for, and that would be the orange buffoon in Florida. This is certainly taking a little while. I told you it would. I don't lie. Like the orange buffoon always lies. I don't. So there we have it, folks. As I said, I do include all the templates for the desktops, even though I have not provided those ISOs. You can build the cinnamon. KDE, LXQT, MATE, and XFCE desktops. You have all of the package build files. I even made a slight mistake of including the built packages in the repo. I normally remove those before I spin up the ISOs because it's not needed, but you have them here. And you can see the Calamari's package is the most recent release of Calamari's. But when you do build your own ISO, I highly recommend you go into each folder, run MK, well, run make PKG against all of the PKG build files to come up with the freshest packages possible. My throat's getting a little dry, so I will cut this short and just wish you well. Remember, go out and vote if you're in the U.S. Mail in your ballots however you like to vote. Take care, stay safe, and you'll see me in another one at some point. Bye-bye.